My name is Sokom Chom from Rome, Cambodia. It was a rather happy childhood, uh, although we were not, you know, rich or anything. The war came and then the Khmer Rouge came from the jungles and we did not know their ideology and we did not know what they were really about, you know. But they preached to the people, okay, you know, we are for the people. We did the revolution for the people, the poor people. They said that there will be no uh, rich people who exploit you, you know, no rich people abuse you, and we all equal. And they occupy and then they, they took all my brothers and sisters and grandparents and aunts and uncles to the jungle. My dad was in the army. He was uh, stationed in a province uh, bordering Vietnam in the east of Cambodia. The Viet Cong or the Khmer Rouge, we didn't know for sure who. They attacked his post and, you know, they killed all, you know, maybe just a few, just, I believe there was like uh, three or four guys, three or four soldiers survived at that time and my father did not survive. In Cambodia under Khmer Rouge, there are places that were like Hera, and there are places that are, you know, a little better. So, you know, I consider the place where I stay was uh, a little better than, you know, other places. We woke up like four or five o'clock in the morning and we just go to the field to uh, build, you know, uh, dirt roads and irrigation system, you know, uh, build the dikes and ditches. Some people uh, get executed for, you know, not doing what they want us to do or, or doing little thing that they think that it's wrong. Yeah, it's wrong. I heard. I heard the screaming. Okay, because they are very meticulous in killing people, and a lot of people got killed along the way. Uh, those who try to escape. Like I was the luckiest one in my family. I had better education. I had better lives. You know. Uh, than my brothers and sisters and uh, you know sometimes I feel guilty also it just so happened that I was lucky that I uh, uh, moved from my hometown my home province to a different province transfer to to study at different school at different province had I stayed behind over there had I stayed there I would have gotten killed because they knew me. They killed my mother because they knew my mother was the wife of a opposing army of the enemies. So I was part of the enemies too. And also at that time, they tried to kill, you know, uh, educated people, students, teachers, you know, doctors, professors and all that. I was sure to get killed if I stayed there in my hometown. But it was so, I, you know, for me it was more like luck. My name Monica Chum. The day that Khmer Rouge go in, we thought it's okay. Yeah. First time, everybody happy. Yeah, in early in the morning, like seven o'clock, you know, the people singing, you know, laughing because they yell at each other. They say, okay, now the voice end. Yeah. After one or two, three, two days, we know it's something wrong, something going on. Because 
the soldier come knock the door and say, get out the house. They have their plan. They want you to go out to the city, go to the, you know, outside the town. Yeah. And first time they told, yeah, we try to stay in the house maybe one or two nights, first time. After that, we know it's something maybe it's not normal. If the old people over there, they call ta. They say, you want to get out of the house or you don't? If you don't, you're going to die here in the house. Yeah, they point the gun at my dad. They show you where you have to go. Like they have direction, like, okay, these people go this way. Like a go, you can go not only they point the gun to you. They say, you go not. So you go not. You know, people that say your direction, you have to go south, you have to go south. Yeah. And, and on the street, the people that sit, like all people, and it's hard to move with, they shoot them, they kill them on the street. Yeah. If you single, they send you to the front. If you have kids, you can stay in the village. So, yeah. So we three of us, uh, they send us uh, to, you know, like a, do like a farm work. Yeah, it's far away from home. Yeah. When we go to the camp, we think, you know, like first time we think maybe brother or sister, you can see each other and talk, but actually not. Both of my brother will pass away. <laughs> because, you know, no food to eat, no medicine. That my brother, before he died, he passed away. I go to see him. Yeah. And then he hold my hand. And then he keep my hand. He said, maybe I cannot survive. And he said, you are lucky. Maybe you take care. Yeah. And he passed away. But the youngest one, I don't have a chance to see him. Because we, we are separate different camp. You almost cry in your heart, but you cannot, <coughs> your tear it not come out. Uh, I think means why, I think it's a miracle. To me, it's a luck. Because when I told them about my path, They ask me why you can't survive. I say it's a miracle for me.